Hey guys, how's it going? DragoX55 here, and today I have this deck that someone wanted me to actually review or go over or check out. Uh, I am just looking at a text message real quick. Uh, anyways, so yeah, they basically wanted me to review or tell them what I thought about the deck. Okay, which I will be getting into that in a second, but um... Uh, but first off, um, I'm sorry if I, the guy that gave me this, I'm sorry if, like, you felt pressured or if I kept, like, talking over you too much. Uh, it's just I really had to go do something and, you know, maybe next time when we talk it'll be, like, nice and easy and stuff, so. Anyways, uh, uh that's out of the way. Uh, so basically what he wanted from this deck, which i not too sure if he said he's actually got to work, because I'm pretty sure he's told me, told me about how he wants it to work, I'm not sure how well it's working, and this is also a deck based off of his, I'm not sure if it's Dueling Network or if it's Dev Pro, either way, uh, it's just that, um, it's a little different than on Dev Pro, since Dev Pro you have like Abyss Chart or number 101 and stuff. But as for here, uh, anyway, so let's actually talk about what he's trying to go for. Basically, his main thing is he wants to make Chaos Goddess and basically like span the field with Frank Fives and actually like you know, Synchro and stuff like that. Which I actually think is a pretty good idea. It's not a half bad card. I mean, at first I looked at it and I'm like, what are you getting? But then I realized, you know, we'll, we'll go into it. So first off, we have two brows. Basically, if you discard it by a card effect, and before I actually go on, when it says card effect, there's two different kind of things that you need to keep in mind. For example, a cost, which is um, Raigeki Break, Let's just go with that. Raigeki Break states that you need to discard a card and then you can destroy a card. Since you're discarding a card to do something, it's the uh, when you're, the thing you're trying to do is the effect. The cost is when you're discarding a card. Yeah. So basically, you wouldn't get this effect because you're you're paying a cost. That's why this card uh, doesn't work with Snipe Hunter. Or, um, there was another card that people used to play with this and they're like, why doesn't it work? Basically anything that requires you to discard to do something doesn't work. If you need to, or if you discard to get, like, for example, this card, you're discarding and drawing a card because that's the, card, the effect of the card, you're getting the ability of whatever you're trying to do. Uh, the only reason I mention this is because Dark Worlds revolve around that, so if you're looking into Dark Worlds, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, so, usually what it would be is like a semicolon right after discard one card, semicolon or something, and that's how you know it's a cost. Like, uh, for Solemn Judgment, uh, yeah, right there, pay 2,000 life points semicolon so you would pay 2,000 life points as a cost so you can't bypass that by any means like even if someone is to negate this you still pay 2,000 life points but they can negate the effect which is right after it says negate the summon or activation and if you do destroy that card that is what they would be negating not the cost so that's why solemn judgment and stuff like that just just I would say that right away. Uh, anyway, so when this card is discarded by an effect of a card, you can draw one card. If it's by your opponent's card effect, you get to draw two cards. Pretty easy. Basically, he's like a little draw engine thing. Uh, next up, we have three Grim Rows. And these ones is why I said it only applies to Dark Worlds on effects. Uh, anyway, so Grim Row. Uh, 
I actually have little to no experience with the Fabled, but I've seen them play before, so I will try my best to talk about them. Uh, so anyways, if you control a Fabled, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard and add one Fabled from your deck to your hand. I have actually played this deck a few times, so I actually understand quite a few things from it. So basically, you would summon like Fabled Raven, for example. Then you would send this card to the graveyard and add something like... Uh, Kershano, or even, wait, no you don't, you would add either Chris or Kershano, my bad, because this just adds stuff to your hand, uh, anyways, uh, so, yeah, you basically would summon Raven, get rid of this, because it can send itself to the grave, I preferably like, uh, hmm, I'm still going off on random things. Basically you have Raven and then you would get rid of this. This card allows you to get a Vable from the deck, which you can get Crush or you can get Krishano. Uh, basically the difference of each one is Crush, if it's discarded, you can special summon one level 4 or lower. Wait, what? No, when it's discarded you can select one. Yeah, you special summoning one level four lower fable. That was right. As for Kishano, you can discard one fabled monster except fabled Kishano to add this card from your graveyard to your hand. So basically, like the thing is, you want to get this card in your graveyard because it works a lot better than when it's in your hand. Because for fables, they're kind of like dark worlds, but not exactly. So when you're discarding stuff, for example, this, basically when you use this effect to spe discard this, you can special summon a level 4 or lower fabled. So you can special summon Raven if you need a tuner, special summon Grimroar, Ro, I don't know how to pronounce these things, sorry. Uh, you can special summon this if you want for a level 4. Even Raven's pretty good to go for. Uh, so you can like Kushano, Kushano, Kushano? Whatever. You go for this one, make activate effect, discard this, then you can bring this to your hand. Then, at this point, this card lets you allows, allows you a special summon because it was discarded by this card. And then you can bring out Fable Raven if it's in your grave, like after you synchro for some reason. I don't know, after you synchro and then this is like in the grave and then you discard this and whatever. Uh, there was like a recycling thing going on here the last time I looked, but yeah, I don't I don't remember how it worked. Actually, no, there's not really recycling going on. I remember how it went. Okay. And for anyone that's curious about Raven, uh, once per turn, and this does work with Dark Worlds. If you discard Dark Worlds with this card, Dark Worlds do get their effects because um, the once per turn is, I believe, the, I don't know. It's, it's just an effect. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so you can discard any number of cards in your hand, and if you do, this card gains the level, one level, four, and 400 attack for each card discarded. Now, technically yes, you can OTK someone with this if you ran like a draw spam hand deck thing where you do like 5 billion cards and discard all of them just for one attack, or you can, well actually I don't know maybe it stops at 12 I don't know how high this can go but that's not what the point of this card is basically this card allows you to discard any number of cards so you can discard let's say gold grapha level eater well, level eater doesn't get an effect but you would be discarding it if you had it uh snow brow not grim roar roar whatever I, one thing I have to say is do not discard this card. If you discard it, you might have a little bit of trouble. Not really, but don't like discard this. This effect needs to go off by itself. Uh, so keep Grim Roars, Roar, whatever. And uh, even Cross is good, and Kushano is good. For some reason, I always think it's like Krushano or something, like Crush. Anyways, besides the point. So you would get like 
gold special summon on the field. If you discard one, it'd be a level three, of course, so you can make a level eight. And then, if well, we'll go into that card in a second. You can make level eights, level sevens, level well. You make a level sevens, but if you use the effect, it's also going to be eights or nines, even tens. So basically, yeah, it's a pretty good tuner if you need a deck that involves discarding. Uh, most Dark World players, not nowadays, because they usually take it out and usually just run spells. But, like, in the old days, they used to run this because it actually ran pretty good. I run it in uh, my Dark World deck that I have, so it's pretty good. Uh, so next up, we have three gold. Basically, if it's discarded, same thing for Silva. By a card effect, you special summon it from your grave, and that's pretty nice because it's a little 5,300 attack point monster that comes out just by discarding it. So, I mean, it's kind of tough, but whatever. And if it's discarded by an opponent's card effect, then you can destroy two cards upon its. But no, it would activate in the grave to destroy two cards, and then special summon. There you go. And one Grapha, alright. Sorry. Oh. I got an itch. Anyways, Grapha, you can discard it from your hand. No, when you when discard this card from your hand, you can destroy one card. That's pretty much all you really need to know. Uh, if it happens to get discarded by a bonus card effect, you can randomly discard one card from your hand, I believe. Wait, no, you can special summon one monster from your opponent's hand. Basically, what it says is you can look at your opponent's hand, and if they... Ah, I can't even speak straight. You randomly pick a card, and then you would special summon it to your side of the field if it's a monster. There you go. Finally, I can explain that, but you would usually never get that effect. Like, that that's never going to happen. If it does... Uh, it would be surprising, but you will re never, ever really get that effect. Uh, anyways, so you can special summon this card from your grave by returning one Dark World monster from your field to the hand, and it cannot be a Grapha, so you can't Grapha attack and then make an Air Grapha for some reason. That's kind of OP if it was, so. Yeah, so basically it pops one and it's a 2700 beater. Uh, basically, usually how people bring it out is like you summon snow or brow. So, just like something simple that's easy to bring out. And even if you cut it, there would be like dark smog or a case of dark world that usually gets the big one out. So you get this one out. If you know what I mean. So, so that's why. It, this card is basically really easy to get out and can be very annoying. That's why like most people get annoyed when you try to mirror force it. And it's like, oh, well, I'm just going to summon Brow again and I'm going to bring him back out. So what are you going to do? Torrential Tribute? I'll do the same exact thing. I mean, I guess you could Torrential Tribute to Brow, but you would go minus one Torrential Tribute, so. Yeah. Basically, move from play it gets rid of Grapha, but enough on Grapha. Uh, next up is two level eaters. Basically, uh, what his thing is is that, and I hope my computer didn't mess up any of this audio recording. But uh, basically, level eater. If you have a level five or higher monster, you can reduce this level by one. Especially summon this card, and this card cannot be tributed except for a, what? Oh, okay. So it can't be tributed except for a tribute summon. I actually didn't know you could do that. <clears throat> to be honest, like you never really use this for tribute summons. You usually use this for synchros or something. I might try to use this in monarchs now that I know you could do that. Huh? Interesting. Uh. Anyways, besides the point. So you basically make these weaker. So you bring this out, and then you can use Fable Raven along with this and level eater or stuff like that to synchro up. Now you might be asking why a level eater is in a dark world fable deck. Well, we'll get into that in a little bit. Next up we have three snow. 
basically the searcher of the deck. When it's discarded, you can add one card that has the name Dark World in it. And what the heck is the other part saying? Uh, apparently, if your opponent, uh, you target one part monster in your opponent's graveyard, add one Dark World. Oh, okay. So this is discarded by an opponent's card effect, and you can choose one monster per opponent's grave and special summon it after you add the Dark World card. Okay. See, I don't know these other effects because they never get discarded by opponents, I'm telling you. I mean, you can play, like, Dark Deal or something, or I forget what card it is, that makes your opponent discard instead of activating a spell card, so... I guess that is a thing, but... It really never happens, so the second effects are usually pointless. Uh, next up is one dark hole. Destroy stuff, honestly. Dark world dealings is a must. Along with drag down is pretty much of a must too, but... You know, since he's playing fables, I'll give him a cut him some slack there. Uh, anyway, so, yeah. Oh yeah, you never want to discard this either. Just saying. Uh... Anyway, so yeah, Dark World Dealings, so basically you, each player draws one, and then since the second part is like discard whatever it's an effect, so you send gold, Grapha, even snow is pretty good. If you have snow, I would always go for snow first and go for like gates or Grapha, whatever you want. One Foolish, uh, this is to get the s level eaters in the grave when I remember. We can also get um, Grafa in the Grave, which is pretty good too. Or Kishano. Let's not forget about that. One Mind Control, because, well, Synchro decks usually use this. Two Mystical Space, get rid of Back Row. Gateway, uh, basically, this one's a little bit of a confusion, but not really. Basically, what it does is all Fiend type monsters gain 300 attack and defense. So, basically, since you're playing like an all fiend deck, except for level eater, and I believe one of the fable, nope, the fables are all fiends, so, yeah, basically all your monsters just get 300 attack and defense, and once per turn you can banish one fiend into your grave to discard one fiend type in your hand to draw one card, and then also you get the effect of the fiend type that you discard, which would be gold, graph uh, snow, brow, Chris, or Chris, whatever, and yeah, that's pretty much all I discard. Or level eater is pretty, well, no, you can't discard level eater because it's not a fiend. Okay, keep that in mind. I usually get that mixed up. Next up, we have two beckoning lights. I forget if it was beckoning, I'm pretty sure beckoning light is what he wanted. So, uh, you discard your turn hand, and then you, for each card you discarded, by this effect, you can add one light monster from your grade to your hand. Uh, this one I'm not too sure if it activates Dark Worlds, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't because, I don't know, I'm just pretty sure it doesn't. Uh, so basically it's to add back all the Raven, or Fabled, my bad, from your grave to your hand, of course, other than Kashano, because Kashano can help itself. So yeah, they're basically all light monsters. If you haven't figured it out already. Compared to Dark Worlds where they're all darks, so... And Level Eaters, dark because it's dark. Kapals, it's just a really good card. I don't see why not. Three Reckless, mm, Maybe... It's a random, like... It's not random. Like, most Dark World decks run it. Well, maybe not nowadays. I don't know. But... Anyway, so you draw two cards and you skip your next two draw phases. Uh, I did show the card, okay. So, um... Anyways, they do not, they do stack, like... Well, if you activate them all at the same time, you don't skip, like, six draw phases. So that's pretty good. Uh, if you activate one, like, turn one, I activate it. And then, like, turn two, I just activate another one they would stack that way and be like four turns I believe or something like that so yeah it's pretty annoying uh, one solemn warning it negates a summon not too much to say I mean personally 
bottomless I kind of like, but Solemn does is a lot quicker and can negate pretty much anything, so. One Torrential Tribute blows up everything. Uh, not much to say. Not too sure what we're trying to exactly blow up, but basically it's not that bad of a problem because if I think about it right, because you would get, uh, you would be getting back, you would be trying to get back your Fabled Raven and then trying to get the certain synchro out again. And let's go into the extra deck. One Gataster, because he's Gataster, and yeah, it's pretty much all these cards are here. Um, I'll get into this in a second. Uh, Scrap Dragon, Level Eater, or Star Eater, Stardust. Uh, there's two level or rank fives. Uh, I know you did say level fives, but keep in mind that XYZs are ranks and that they do not apply to the level theory. So if you're like, well, I can summon Raven and then synchro up with this to make a level seven, does not work that way. Just wanted to point that out if you weren't too sure. I'm pretty sure you knew how the thing worked, but you know, these aren't too bad. I personally like Volcasaurus and maybe the other card, but you know, it's whatever you want to make that counts. If Tyrus is never too bad and this one gets rid of like back row which is always nice. So uh so basically his main purpose or goal is to get Chaos Goddess and basically make some very OP stuff. And basically if you don't know what this fabulous card does, it basically you disc or you send one light monster from your hand to the grave so since you're sending, you're not discarding, which doesn't make it a make uh, crust. I believe it is doesn't make crust gets effect because you're dis you're sending and not discarding. Sending is when you're just like sending something to the grave. Discarding is well, they're pretty much the same thing, just different wording, and that usually confuses people because like you're still sending it to the grave, but. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it differently. If one of you guys in the comments want to go into detail about the difference, then I will give you a thumbs up and even maybe a big thank you note or something. I don't know. Let's not get too excited about it. Uh, anyways, so yeah, since it's sending and not discarding, it doesn't make any effects go off. So keep that in mind when you're sending a light to the grave uh anyways uh let's see so level five oh right when you send a light monster to the grave you can bring back a level five or higher dark monster in your graveyard and special summon that monster it cannot be used as a secret material monster which usually in this deck is probably not gonna happen so and you notice level five or higher i thought it was only like the monsters in the deck but no it's anything it could be any of the synchros. Uh, well, these ones aren't darks. But basically, this one is pretty nice too, which I'll go into briefly. Uh, so, any like dark synchro monster, even Gataster, is in play. So, uh, I wouldn't bother bringing back Rafa because Rafa can bring itself back. But you can bring, he said in the thing when I was talking to him. That bringing back gold is basically like a uh, basically a main kind of thing that you would do, so you can make like rank fives or something. But of course, you can always go for the other synchros in here that are higher. Uh, so yeah, uh, crimson blader, you know what it does? Dark end is pretty nice. You can send a card to the grave. Uh, you can target one monster, your opponent controls, face up, face down, doesn't matter. And this card leaves 500 to send it to the grave. Pretty nice because you basically are getting endless dark and dragons since this card. And then of course the way he's trying to do it is do beckoning light and get back the fables so you can keep using this effect and not run out and stuff like that. Which I think is a pretty cool concept. 
Uh, if you're curious on how to synchro with a light tuner to or more non dark tuners monsters that are level 8, basically, in it, the wiki, the way he told me, and all that, the way you do it is you would do Fabled Raven, discard gold. Gold special summons, you have a level 8 there. However, the card states you need two or more darks, so you that's where level eater comes in. You take a star away from gold, star, gold becomes four, this is a level three, and level eater is obviously level one, so you make a level eight, and then you make this, so. Yeah, a little bit of a pain in that circumstance, but you know, if like people have their dreams and you know if he wants to try to make this card then I'm going to try my best to <clears throat> try to help him with that so I mean tech well uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other things I can say not really it's really it's actually actually I uh, can't speak English it's a really good concept to believe it or not like, you don't see too many people trying to bring out this card. And, you know, most people are just going for, like, straight um, Tiger Kings or Garunix or... <clears throat> well, those aren't probably not relevant. Draco Sacks, Chidori's, and stuff. So it's kind of see, it's kind of nice to see something original. Well, I don't know how many people have ran this before, but, you know, original. So, original in my eyes, because I have not seen anyone run this yet. Uh, Dark Highlander is pretty nice, where I'm not going to go too much into it, because it requires, like, equip spells for the other effect. Or equip cards, my bad. Uh, you could target one monster your opponent controls that is equipped with an equip card. Yeah, it's nice, but the, the part I like about this card is where your opponent can't synchro summon, which is... You might be like, well, what if my opponent's not playing a synchro deck? Well, then that's kind of a bummer, but, you know, not too many synchro monsters prevent synchro summons, so, you know, pretty nice to keep in mind that you can do that. Uh, I mean, he's not great, but he's still, like, he's got an amazing effect for, like, if he was back then, before, like, this card would wreck 5Ds, no joke. Like, what are you going to really do if your deck relies on synchros? You're screwed. Yeah, of course you can Lightning Vortex, but I mean, like, synchro-wise or something that, I don't know. Uh, Fable Leviathan, apparently, this is, like, I'm not too knowledgeable about it. I have seen people play Fables. Uh, basically, when this card's on the field and it's destroyed and set to grave, like three, so basically it recycles fables your hand. It's nice, up to three, of course. Uh, okay, anyway, so when this card is synchro summoned, if you have one lesser card, one less, what the card? If you have one or less cards in your hand, okay, there we go, you can draw until you have two cards. Uh, maybe change this out for something else. I don't know. Like, when do you really have two cards in your hand? Or one or less cards? I mean, it's not bad, but... Quite frankly, it's not doing too much. If you're, like, playing draw-heavy deck, and you're gonna at least have, like, a brow or a gold or something always in your hand. So, you know you keep in mind. Uh, I, I don't. I don't. Know. I don't really care for this card from the way it looks right now. I mean, I'd rather play Armadies or whatever, the light one monster that negates everything. At least that way, it'd be good. Uh, one fabled Valkyrius. Once per turn, you could discard one fiend to draw one card. Uh, I think that still is an effect, so you can probably get effects of uh, basically the dark worlds and stuff. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the extra stuff. So basically, what I think 
And sorry for this being like 30 minutes. Obviously, there's gonna be a part cut out because I was talking to someone. Uh, anyways, so uh, for the extra deck, uh, I would probably take out Fable Dragon, Bacon, however you pronounce it. I don't really care for what this does. Like, it, it's okay, but I would take it out. Uh, he had um, Stardust Carrot Dragon or something, but that's like in future, so. In the future, uh, I don't know what synchros they have actually. Like, I haven't been paying attention. Maybe, um, Weez, whatever his name is, the, is that only for zombies? I forget. I think it's for a zombie tuner, so I might be wrong about that card, so maybe not that card. But I would probably take this out and put, like, Armadies or something. I know you're trying to stick the Fabled or Dark World stuff, but this card I cannot see helping you out too much. Maybe in a clutch, but I don't see. Like, as for level 5, you can pretty much put. I don't know where he went. As for level 5s, you can pretty much do something better. Um. As for the extra deck, I like these two. They're pretty good. Just keep in mind there's other level 5s, like Focusaurus or something, that you might want to put into the side deck. If you. You know, if you're doing that stuff. Which is always nice to have options and stuff. Um, I like the fact that Chaos Goddess has that ability. Uh, two it actually does seem like a good amount, right? As it is, like if playing three, basically makes it less room for stuff. Um, yeah, maybe. Well, I'm not gonna say anything about Star Eater. I'm. I was gonna say maybe take out Star Eater, but then again, Star Eater is really good. So, uh, one thing to keep in mind is Highlander, you need to watch out for it because it can stop your plays. So, keep in mind about that. Maybe throw in a Black Rose or something, some other generic level 7 that you can go into would be nice instead of, like, you know, just this. I mean, it's a great attack point monster, it's just it stops the flow of the deck if you're trying to synchro. So. Uh, as for the deck itself, uh, I'm going to test it out before I even say anything, like final testing, and I'll let you know what I come up with. Beckoning Light and Reckless Creed, not too sure, but, I mean, they're not bad additions. I mean, they basically do what you're trying to get done. I mean, Beckoning, you're just trying to get your light monsters. Of course, you're not getting effects, but, oh well. And Reckless, you're drawing two cards, which I can't complain. Uh, Gate Dark Worlds already have, like, a heavy draw engine anyway, so... Well, maybe not a heavy draw engine. Uh, for Foolish, maybe try one for one. That'd be pretty nice. Um... I'm not too familiar about other Fabled monsters. I kind of figured maybe two of these, but one is still fine in my opinion. Uh... Maybe test out a third level eater. Not really super necessary. But, you know. Well, actually, two is fine. Two is fine. Uh, I was thinking about Brow maybe at three, but, yeah. Not really needed. Uh, also, I know you said something about Beige, which uh, Beige is a little for a special summons itself. That's kind of a nice card to side deck if you want to try it, but I think Brow actually has more, like, support for the deck than Beige, so. Uh, overall, I think the deck's pretty solid. It's, it's, like, it doesn't seem to have too many holes. Maybe take out Torrential and put in a Mirror Force. That's my other suggestion. I, you know, for a deck that you're trying to get a lot of cards out, I don't see Torrential being all that great, but, you know, it. It depends on what deck you're facing, because Torrential can be good in different situations. But, you know, if you're already, like, boarded up, then Torrential can become a dead card. Like, if you have, like, let's say, Catastor, Crimson Blader on the field, and then, like, your opponent summons out, like, Blue Eyes, or something. I don't know. I'm just saying random things. Then you're not going to want Torrential, because you already have Catastor and Crimson Blader. Which can be troublesome, and you basically have no like out to it other than Cabal. So, 
something to keep in mind. I mean, I was saying just like a side deck it or something. Mirror Force, pretty good card. Maybe some deep prisons if you don't like Mirror Force. I don't know. Uh, maybe bump Reckless down to two and put a Mirror Force in. That'd be good. I don't know. I mean, the deck works as it should. It doesn't need too much tuning. There's a few, I already gave like a few tips and stuff that you can put in and it's pretty nice. So, I basically give you an 8 out of 10 on this, you know. That's better than I would have done, <laughs> to be honest. But I will go through and test it out in Duel, see how it feels and stuff. And then I will make my own version and show what I would do with it. But if you're not interested in all that, and just want to see the testing and what I think during testing that's fine the rebuilt version is just you know so I can show what I would probably use and stuff so you know all that good stuff so I will catch you guys later I hope you enjoyed this episode and make sure you leave your comment section down below tell me what your thoughts are if you guys enjoyed the deck that's great if you guys didn't please don't give the guy too much pressure because you know he's really wants this to be a good deck so and it really is a good deck i don't know how it phases to nowadays meta but it is pretty good um i don't know the fabled archetype too much so maybe if you guys want to tell him other fabled stuff that you can use then go right ahead so catch you guys later <laughs>